YouTube. My name is Rachel Mayo. Welcome to my channel and thank you for being here. I'm going to be discussing how the total lunar eclipse that is happening in the sign of Taurus is going to affect you according to your ascendant sign. This eclipse is happening on the 8th of November at 16 degrees of Taurus. So find out where 16 degrees of Taurus is in your own natal birth chart. Whichever house that degree falls is the house that you should be listening for and it could be absolutely different from your own ascendant. So listen to 16 degrees degrees of Taurus. The last time we had an eclipse at 16 degrees of Taurus was on November 8 in 2003. So look back and see how that eclipse affected you. Then you'll have an idea of what gets triggered in your chart at 16 degrees of Taurus. However, keep in mind that this time might be slightly different or perhaps even very different simply because we have planet Uranus that the planet that tends to bring the unexpected into our lives is exactly conjunct is exactly conjunct this lunation so because of this we are going to have a slightly different twist to the story and also keep in mind that this is a total lunar eclipse this means something is going to be totally and absolutely eclipsed out of your life or so something is definitely coming to a culmination or an ending wherever 16 degrees of Taurus whichever house 16 degrees of Taurus is in your own natal birth chart please do not panic sometimes it's the things that we really want to end in our lives the negative things that need to come to a conclusion or be absolutely eliminated and eclipsed Perhaps that's what's happening for you. So it all depends how this is aspecting your own natal birth chart. This is why I always advise you to get a reading with a professional astrologer to really see how this is going to aspect your chart before you begin to panic. I'm still running the $60 special for the solar eclipse reading. So you can always book me for a reading. I'm fully booked until about the 8th of November because a lot of people have been booking me for this solar eclipse reading. So make sure you go to my website and take advantage of this special while it's still running. I'll probably be still I'll probably still have it open until about the 10th of November. So make sure you book now. This eclipse might bring a lot of anxiety. I mean, nobody wants things to end in their life, especially if you're not, especially if you're not ready to let go. As we all know, Taurus is a fixed earth sign. So whatever is going to be eliminated is not going to, is going to be something we've been holding on to for a very long time. And perhaps we've been holding on to this for about 18 and a half years or perhaps nine years. This is how long the nodes take to come back to the same sign or the opposing sign. Another thing to consider is we had a new beginning at the new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Taurus around the 30th of May this year. What did you initiate around that time? Whatever that whatever you initiated is being brought up of is being brought up for a review, transformation or perhaps absolute conclusion. Some part of whatever you started then is going to be eliminated in the sign of Taurus conjunct crazy conjunct Uranus so whatever happens at this lunar eclipse is going to require some level of adjustment even if it's something really good it's going to be something that is going to come at you in a way that you absolutely could not predict in a way that you absolutely you know, in a way that you absolutely could not predict in a very unexpected and perhaps even dramatic way. And even if this eclipse is ending something that is negative, something that has been ongoing, it's still going to require some adjustment for you to for you to move on to the new phase. So expect this eclipse to bring radical and unexpected changes because Uranus is tightly conjunct this eclipse and the transiting karmic nodes are very close at 13 degrees of Taurus. This is what makes this a total absolute lunar eclipse. So the things that are ending, keep in mind, don't be afraid. These are things that you started six months ago. 
these are coming up for re-evaluation transformation or absolute common or absolute conclusion and ending this is not going to be about a topic or area in your life that you didn't see coming it's how it's going to happen is what you're not going to see coming is what is unpredictable ruler of this eclipse of venus is currently transiting in the sign of scorpio where the current transiting south node is this is the area where we do the letting go and the releasing elimination this is what the sign of scorpio is about it's a, it can be about total surrender burning everything down to the ground and starting anew the rise of the phoenix so venus this the so venus is there unfortunately venus is in detriment in the sign of scorpio because she obviously is very comfortable in her own sign of taurus she's as far away from home as possible in the sign of scorpio venus is also the ruler of libra where she just completed her transit so venus is a big part of this lunation she's asking you to let go of something in the scorpio area so that you can move to your north node your fated karmic north node the future is here to help you release your past something that is something that is holding you back but the positive aspect of this lunation is the fact that the moon is in the sign of Taurus where she's most comfortable. The moon is the moon is exalted in the sign of Taurus. So this is very positive as crazy and dramatic as the events that are coming are going to be. Part of you is still going to feel a bit calm and collected. I have my moon in the sign of Taurus. So I'm very familiar with this moon and this absolute total lunar eclipse is exactly conjunct my moon. So this will be very exciting to see how this is going to affect me. I will come back at a later time in another video and let you know how it transpires. I can definitely let you know how this feels because Uranus did conjunct my moon about three months ago and I'm usually a very calm and collected type of person. I was experiencing high anxiety, anxiety that I've never felt before in my life. But ultimately that conjunction brought something very new in my life, in my home area. So if this lunar eclipse is conjunct your moon, expect to be very, very, expect to feel a lot of stress and anxiety just simply because just simply because of the, simply because of the conjunction of Uranus. So when a lunar eclipse ends something in your life, a, a marriage, a business contract, a job, this is coming to an absolute end. This means there's no going back. It's totally over. It's totally eclipsed. So please do not beg, do not ask for reconciliation. Not when this has come to an end as a result of this lunar eclipse it's absolutely over save your dignity just walk away because because venus the ruler of the north node being at the south node is probably going to bring you something else it's going to replace whatever is eclipsed out of your life with something really positive something that is fated karmic and something that is going to last in your life for a very long time then something that is going to last and stay in your life for a very long time so just simply let go and save your dignity. So who's going to be affected the most by this lunation? Everyone. We all have 16 degrees of Taurus somewhere in our chart. However, other people are going to have a much more intense effect. The people who have the people who will be affected the most, of course, are the fixed signs. Who are the fixed signs? Taurus, of course. This lunation after all is happening in your sign. Scorpio. This lunation is happening opposite your sign and you are the ruler of the south node. So these two signs are going to be most affected. And then, of course, Leo and Aquarius, they are the other fixed signs. Who is going to have a much better experience with this lunation? It is the water and the earth signs. The earth signs are Taurus. The earth signs are Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo. They're going to have a better experience because you're going to have a harmonious trine. These earth signs are going to experience a trine aspect to the moon and a sextile aspect to the sun on the south node. The water signs will also have a better experience with this, a better experience with this lunar eclipse. 
they're simply because they're going to experience the sextile to the moon and the trine to the sun at the south node. The other water signs are Cancer and Pisces. So if you have a point, an angle, a planet around 16 degrees of Taurus, that area is going to be activated by this total lunar eclipse. So you are going to be highly impacted by this lunation. And if you were born on or around the 25th of October, a few days before or a few days after, you're going to have this energy in your solar return chart. This is energy that is going to be with you for the whole solar year. This means that this is the year you're going to have absolute culminations, endings. Something is going to be eclipsed out of that Taurus house, wherever that is going to fall in your own natal, wherever that is going to fall in, in your solar return chart. This is an excellent time for you to get a solar return reading. This is a special event for you, Scorpio. This is a point where your life changes. This is the year that you're going to remember for a very long time to come because of what is going to transpire because of what is going to transpire in this solar year so i suggest that you book me for a reading so that we can know which house which house in your solar return chart is going to be specifically affected so you know where this energy is going to be emphasized and if your loy the lord of the year is venus that means that your venus has that means that your venus is being highly activated at this lunation so you are going to possibly have an event happen that was promised in your in your solar return chart i'm still running the contest for the free solar return chart reading if you'd like to be a part of this contest i suggest that you hit subscribe also make sure that your subscription is visible so that i can so that i can pick you out in my analytics also make sure to like this video so that youtube can show this video to other people who love astrology it really helps with the algorithm so subscribe like this video and share this video with your friends and share this video with your friends and family or perhaps on your social media platform we had three winners last month this month i'm going to choose four lucky subscribers also make sure to leave me a comment in the comment section of this video saying free solar so that i know that you want to be a part of this contest if your mahadasha lord is venus mahadashas are time periods in vedic astrology so if you're being ruled by venus venus is going to be activated by this lunar eclipse so that means that you could potentially have an event happen coincidentally the u.s elections are going to be held on november 8th this is really intense and dramatic energy and i'm not trying to put anyone in panic or in fear but expect the unexpected is going to be dramatic it's going to be radical and probably some secrets will be revealed because of course mercury is part of this lunation and is on the south node on on the south node in the sign of scorpio L let's keep in mind that this is a total lunar eclipse because of the proximity of the nodes the nodes are just at 13 degrees of taurus and this lunar eclipse is at 16 degrees of taurus and the car and the outer planets are highly activated and involved in this lunation this is going to make this eclipse particularly very karmic the nodes and the outer planets are going to deliver karma at this lunar eclipse so whatever changes whatever ends in your life is part of your karmic destiny venus the ruler of this lunar eclipse is currently transiting the sign of scorpio on the south node so being that this is a north node lunar eclipse it means that we're going to be brought it means that venus is going to bring us something new but being venus being but with venus transiting the south node and in detriment venus is telling us to let go of something in our scorpio house so that she can bring in the new energy something positive from the north node venus is saying let go before i can give you something new something is going to be released eliminated because we can no longer carry it towards our future 
we have to let go in order to move forward so let's take a look at the chart of this total lunar eclipse this lunar eclipse is happening at 602 a.m that's eastern standard time new york time please check for your own location in order to get the correct ascendant the ascendant for new york is in scorpio and whenever we have an ascendant in scorpio something absolutely comes to an end or transformation in whatever house the scorpio house is in your own natal birth chart the sun is at 16 degrees of scorpio opposing the moon in taurus at 16 degrees of taurus the moon is exalted in the sign of Taurus so that is a very positive aspect and we're going to somehow still feel calm and collected we're not going to lose our shit basically even though Uranus is tightly conjunct this lunation at around 17 degrees of Taurus this aspect is what is going to bring the unexpected the dramatic the aspect of Uranus conjunct the moon will bring a level of anxiety and stress but however because the moon is in the sign of taurus we will we will still find a way to keep calm and rational in mundane astrology the moon rules the people so as a collective we'll be feeling very stressed and anxious at the time of this lunation and for us here in america that could be the people feeling um, anxious and perhaps even upset and that could be the people feeling anxious about the elections Mercury is around 15 degrees of Scorpio and in the sign of Scorpio Mercury is going to and in the sign of Scorpio Mercury is probably going to be revealing some type of secret some type of hidden information to do with finances mortgages other people's money committed relationships so if there's something hidden in your finances or in your committed relationships Mercury being on the south node is going to reveal these secrets and whatever information that has been repressed venus the ruler of this lunation and the ruler of the north node is transiting the south node in the sign of scorpio unfortunately venus is in detriment in the sign of scorpio simply because she loves to be in her sign of taurus that she rules or libra Venus is also traveling too close to the sun. She was recently combust at 29 degrees of Libra and is still under combustion. So she's not going to be seen until after about the 2nd of December. This is making the ruler of this total lunar eclipse less powerful so that is one of the reasons why this lunar eclipse is going to be challenging it is, it's going to be quite challenging especially for the fixed signs another aspect that is quite difficult at this lunation plan, the planet that's ruling this lunation is also squaring saturn venus squaring saturn is usually an aspect of breakups or financial losses it's, it's very likely that some relationships that have been having challenges up to this point are going to break off a relationship will be eclipsed or someone that is really valuable and important to you will be eclipsed out of your life it could also be financial losses for some this is why most astrologers will advise you not to make life-changing decisions at a time of an eclipse because you may not have all the information and you may not be seeing things clearly so i would suggest that you give it some time give it a week or so before you make any life-changing decisions unless those life-changing decisions are things you are planning to do months ago on the other hand if an event happens and things happen to you and you have to make a decision fast then you can go ahead and make decisions because you're basically reacting to a situation or an event that has happened occurred in your life saturn is still squaring uranus and the moon at this lunation that is another tough aspect to deal with however this square between saturn and uranus is is finally separating so whatever is brought so whatever is brought up at this lunation is probably going to be something that we've been dealing with since this square started in 2021 another aspect that's making this lunation especially challenging is the fact that the ruler of the south node mars is currently transiting retrograde and the south node rules the past so most of us are going to have to go back into the past past situations are going to be brought forward at this lunation but unfortunately mars is 
tightly square Neptune. This aspect will bring confusion, deception, outright, outright treachery and lies. You could be the victim or you could be the perpetrator. So just be careful to make sure that you're seeing things as they are and to ask another person's opinion before you make any major life-changing decisions. So let's look for some positivity in this lunar eclipse. The fact that Venus is the ruler of this eclipse and she's supposed to bring us something new is quite positive. And the fact that the moon is in Taurus and is exalted is also positive. The moon is making a sextile, a white sextile to Neptune and Jupiter. That is supportive energy that can activate your intuition so that you can get guidance. The moon and Uranus are widely trying. Jupiter, who is currently at the anoretic degree of around 29 degrees at the time of this lunation, and is square the galactic center in the sign of Sagittarius. That is another very karmic aspect. It is essentially transiting the last sign of the zodiac, the 12th house of the zodiac. This is where things come to die. This is where things end because Jupiter is Jupiter is completing a 12 year cycle. Something in your Pisces house and your Sagittarius house is also being highlighted at this lunation. And remember we had the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction sometime in April. I believe it was around April 15 this year, 2022. This aspect is being reactivated so because Jupiter is back in the sign of Pisces. Even though they're not going to be exactly conjunct, Jupiter and Neptune are in the same sign. So whatever this aspect was promising to deliver, this is what Jupiter has come back to the sign of Pisces to complete that delivery. So if you haven't watched my video on the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, I suggest that you watch that video so that you get more information on what this aspect is trying to bring in your life. Jupiter and Neptune are also trying the Sun, Mercury and Venus. The trying, to Ven the trying between Venus and Neptune is a very karmic and spiritual aspect. This aspect could literally bring you your soulmate. So perhaps you, you, so perhaps you have to let go of an old situation, agreement or relationship, attachment in order for you to meet this new person, your soulmate. Jupiter and Neptune are also aspecting Pluto, who also happens to be the core ruler of Scorpio, the South Node, where the transiting, where the transiting South Node is. So this is another very positive aspect. These are outer planets. So we're going to be feeling the effects of this aspect probably until the end of the year when Jupiter moves out of the sign of until Jupiter moves out of the sign of Pisces. Another positive aspect that is supporting this lunar eclipse is the fact that Saturn is in trine to Mars, who's currently transiting the sign, who's currently transiting retrograde in the sign of Gemini. This is a very positive, harmonious trine and is supporting the actions that we're going to take, solid actions about the found solid actions in the houses that are involved one challenging aspect that's actually positive is the fact that pluto and mars are in, involved is the fact that pluto and mars are still involved in a quincunx this is positive in the fact that these two rule the south node and if they're not looking at the south node this means that it's going to make letting go easier Somewhat, it's going to let letting go a bit easier because they're not directly aspecting the south node that they rule. They're busy. They're in an aspect that they're in an aspect where they're not really able to see each other and communicate with each other and give instruction on what to cut out of what 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 to cut out of our life in the south in the Scorpio house, the south node. The other reason why this lunation is going to be somewhat challenging is the fact that the the lunation is in a fixed sign. The Taurus is the most fixed sign. The planets in the south node, the planets in the north node, all squaring Saturn in all, all squaring Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. The only fixed sign that doesn't have a transiting planet is the sign of Leo. So perhaps this is where the energy could be released from this grand from this from this very challenging T square. This total lunar eclipse is a very karmic turning point. 
this is going to be a time in your life that you're going to remember and, and recognize as one of the biggest turning points in your life. The other reason why this total lunar eclipse is so karmic is the fact that it's activating the previous Mars Uranus North Node conjunction that happened in the sign of Taurus. This conjunction happened on the 1st of August 2022. I made a I made an extensive video on this conjunction. So if you haven't watched that video, I suggest that you go and watch that video so that you can have more information in order for you to so you can have more information so you can understand just how important and relevant this conjunction is. So this conjunction is being activated by this lunation this is another reason why this lunar eclipse is very powerful. So if you didn't have an event happen because of that conjunction, you're going to definitely have an event occur as a result of the activation by this total lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus at 16 degrees. The conjunction was at 1841 of Taurus. It's still very in, it's still an orb. So Pluto, the other ruler of the South Node, is trining the Moon, Uranus, and the North Node. This is a positive aspect. The the trine aspect makes energy flow easily between the houses involved. Mercury is also conjunct the sun on the south node in Scorpio. So perhaps he, he is bringing up some serious old issues that needs to be discussed. It looks like the secrets, it looks like, it looks like secrets will be revealed at this time. This information could have something to do with a prominent female or something totally scandalous involving other people's money and the banks so it could be that secret love affairs are revealed at this time saturn in aquarius is also squaring venus and mercury who are transiting the south node this is another aspect that could bring about this is an aspect that could bring bad news saturn square mercury is an aspect of bad news venus square saturn unfortunately is an aspect of the breakup this could bring major breakups in romantic relationships or marriages and perhaps since v and perhaps money since venus rules since venus also rules finance mars the other ruler of the south node is in Scorpio currently transiting retrograde in the sign of Gemini in the sign of Gemini unfortunately Mars is square Neptune in the sign of Pisces this aspect will be active for most of the transit of Mars in Gemini Mars is going to leave the sign of Gemini sometime next year in March this aspect will bring confusion deception fake news so basically you cannot trust whatever you see on the news or telly you have to rely on other sources make sure you double check whatever information you're receiving at this time another unfortunate result of this aspect is that it could bring deception in relationships it could bring cheating and outright treachery in relationships so that's something to definitely look out for if there's anything that's been below the surface whatever has been hidden in your committed relationships your intimate relationships or with your finances mercury is going to bring up that information perhaps that's the bad news aspect right there these are karmic times so don't deceive others don't promise to deliver more than you can don't promise more than you can deliver so aside from the lunar eclipse just looking at the outer planets Jupiter is ending a 12-year cycle in the sign of Pisces, a sign that he rules. So he's going to definitely, so he is going to deliver something before he leaves. Jupiter is leaving the sign of Pisces sometime at the end of the year. And as I said earlier, Pisces is the 12th house of the Zodiac. This is where things come to an absolute end. This is where things come to die. And the fact that he's also squaring a karmic point, the galactic center. So Jupiter is de definitely going to deliver karma. Our lives are also being shaken up because of the Saturn square Uranus. And the fact that Saturn is ending a 29 year cycle in the sign of Aquarius. Saturn will not be back for another 29 years. So that is a relief. I believe in Vedic astrology, they say that when Saturn leaves a sign that he rules, they, they say that when Saturn leaves a sign, he leaves a gift. I believe that Saturn will leave. I believe that this happens in the signs that he particularly rules. Expect Saturn to leave you a gift at the end of his transit sometime in March 2023. Saturn will only reward you according to what you deserve. If you've been good, you will get a positive gift. If you've been bad, you will get what you sold. You, you will reap what you sold. 
Pluto is also ending a 248 year cycle. That is, the, that, that is how long Pluto takes to go around the zodiac. This is a once in a lifetime transit. We're not, we're, we're not going to have, we're not going to have Pluto in the sign of Capricorn in this lifetime. So Pluto is also delivering karma in our Capricorn house. Jupiter conjunct Neptune is another once in a lifetime transit that, that is not going to happen for another 168 years. So Neptune is also going to be leaving the sign of Pisces sometime in 2024. We're probably not going to have the same lifestyle, all the things that we're accustomed to, all the things that we became accustomed to in the previous years. All these things are coming to some type of conclusion by 2026. The Earth will be a different place. Aries Ascendant Sun Hormone. This lunar eclipse is happening in your second house. This is where you will have culminations and this is the house where something is going to be eclipsed out of your life. The second house is the Taurus house. So Aries, if you have not listened to the beginning of this video, I suggest that you go back and listen to the whole introduction because this really pertains to you. The second house rules over our earning, our ability, what we love and value. It rules the mouth, what comes in and out of the mouth. So perhaps you're going to have an ending in a way of making money. A job or a business is going to come to a rather sudden and dramatic ending. But the purpose of this ending is so that you will be released in order for you to evolve, for you to start something that is truly meaningful, something that could last in your life for a very long time to come. Eclipses bring energy or change events in our life that could last for up to 18 and a half years when the nodes come back to the same location and same degree. So this is really karmic, it's really big, and since you also rule the natural eighth house of the zodiac, and also because you're ruled by Mars, this eclipse is going to be very life-changing for you, Aries. If you've been having dietary issues, perhaps you have a bad diet, that has perhaps caused a chronic condition in your life, this is the time that you may decide to absolutely overhaul your diet so that you can so that you can improve your health. For others, it could be an improvement in the diet so that you can reduce your weight. For others, it could be that you've been selling your products for a very low price. You could decide that your product is really that good and is worth much more. And at this eclipse, you will suddenly change your prices. And because, you are, and because of that, you'll be making more money. And for others who've been dealing with issues of low self-esteem, you will have the courage and bravery to make these to make these needed changes. Your ruling planet Mars is not directly aspecting this lunar eclipse. However, your ruling planet Mars is the ruler of the south node and is currently transiting retrograde in the sign of Gemini. You have the power to choose what you want to eliminate because the south node obviously is asking you to eliminate something and Mars in Gemini is asking you to go back over certain information in your Gemini house before you make any life-changing decisions. Mars is negatively aspecting Neptune so you are one of the people that should be really careful making life-changing decisions because you may not be seeing things clearly. And if you need further guidance, I suggest that you book a reading with me at rachel-mayo.com. The link to the solar return, the link to the eclipse reading special is right below this video. Taurus Ascendant Sun Hormone. This lunation is happening in your first house. The first house is the ascendant and therefore it makes it an angle house. When an angle is activated as a result of a total lunar eclipse, expect something to be absolutely and totally eclipsed out of your life. This is also because the, when, when, an, when the ascendant is activated, it activates all the other angles in your chart. It activates the MC, the IC, and the descendant. So whatever changes you're going to make in your first house, these changes are going to affect every angle in your chart. So Taurus, this is a major, major karmic moment in your life. Your life is not going to be the same. This is the year that you're going to remember for a very, very long time to come. The tables are changing. The tables are turning. This is a major karmic point in your life. 
Taurus, this is an excellent time for you to get a reading so that you can find out exactly how this lunation is going to affect you according to the placements in your own natal birth chart. The first house is you, the person, your body. So this is going to pers this is going to be very, very personal for you, Taurus. You are going to probably change the way others see you. Some of you could decide to do a radical makeover. So if this is your ascendant, it's going to affect you, your body personally. Some of you could make major changes to your body. These changes could be seen as quite radical by others. Perhaps you will go from really short hair to really long extensions or from really long hair to cutting your hair really short or perhaps even going bald. Some of you could go through a major changes to your body, some type of cosmetic surgery to enhance a certain part of your body or to reduce uh, or to reduce a certain part of your body. It's all very individual and what it is that you want changed about how others see you. Some of you could have an identity change, change of sex. Some of you could change your name. This major change will be seen by others. And if this is your sun sign, you will have a change in your, you, 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 may ha you could have a major dramatic change in your status, how others see you. For others, it could be changes with the males in your life because the sun does rule the male. And it also rules our career, how others see you. You're standing in society. So you could have major changes with that. If this is your moon, you will have major changes with the women in your life or an emotional change when it comes to the moon it could also have to do with a change in the home area or your ancestry so it's very likely that some of you will have a major move as a result of this total lunar eclipse. It is here to bring an absolute end to something in your Taurus area. Taurus, if you haven't listened to the introduction of this video, I suggest you go and listen to the whole introduction because, uh, because this is your eclipse. So all the information is really pertinent to you. So go back and listen to the whole introduction. There's invaluable information in the introduction. Uh, so I'm a Taurus moon myself with my moon being exactly conjunct Uranus at the time of this lunation i already knew that i was going to be moving again i've already moved twice this year so this is going to make it the third time this is the last time you're probably going to see this background because because i've already moved from this location i've moved in with my partners so i'm ending a phase of living alone and now finally moving in with my partner this is very fitting with the energy of this eclipse because i'm letting go of something in order to achieve something towards my fated future. So this eclipse can be bittersweet for some. The Taurus, there are just way too many aspects going on at this lunation, so it's very difficult to make a personal prediction for anyone because of all the major planetary aspects. Your ruling planet, Venus, is very involved in this lunation. Venus is currently transiting the south node, but Venus is a big part of this lunation. So Taurus, this means that you are going to have the power to be the one who chooses what should be taken out of your life because you are at the south node. You're releasing something there in order to bring in something that is fated and something that is in order to bring in something that is better, something that is fated. Gemini, Ascendant, Sun, or Moon. This solar eclipse is happening in your 12th house. This is where you'll have major culminations and endings. The 12th house is where you should expect the unexpected and some type of radical change. This is where you're going to have something eclipsed out of your life. The 12th house is a hidden house. This is the area where we are blind. We cannot see in the 12th house. It is a dark and hidden places. This is why it rules places like prisons, hospitals, asylums, anywhere that is hidden away from society. It also rules over hospitals. The 12th house is the area of our hidden enemies. And sometimes the hidden enemy could be yourself because of your self-sabotaging habits. So this is a really, really big house in that it also rules over generational karma. And this is karma that you have, this is karma that you didn't make. This is karma that you earned because of a last name, the family that you were born into. So with a total lunar eclipse here, 
the luminaries are focused on this dark place so whatever has been hidden is going to be illuminated at this time so if you've been having secret affairs secret love affairs with a married man all these situations are going to be highlighted and brought to the surface at this time especially in that the sign of scorpio where the south node is where the south node is is highly in, is very active at this lunation because this is where the sun is and this is where venus is and this is also where your ruling planet mercury is currently transiting so with mercury currently transiting there and square saturn you might be receiving some negative news or you might be the one delivering some type of negative upsetting news the best way to use this energy is for you to end anything that has been holding you back and self-sabotaging habits if you have a drinking problem a drug problem or any other type of negative escape this is an excellent time for you to voluntarily choose to end these bad self-sabotaging habits going to rehab going to rehab get some help get some counseling if you don't use this energy this way this is the time that you could face a negative consequences of whatever it is that you've been doing behind closed door behind closed doors whichever ways that you've been self-sabotaging all these situations could come to a head make an effort to end negative things in your life on the other hand if you've been dealing with family karma and it's been really bringing you down this is an energy where it could radically unexpectedly just be eclipsed out of your life and you'll be given a chance to create your own karma because when the karmic nodes are involved they uh, involve things that have been happening in our life for a very long time about 18 years 18 and a half years or perhaps even a whole lifetime because the 12th house is generational karma so it's generation to generation gemini if you haven't listened to the beginning of this video i suggest that you listen to the whole introduction because there's information in the introduction that will help you evaluate how this lunar eclipse is going to affect you according to your own natal birth chart and if you need further guidance I suggest you book a reading with me the reading to the eclipse special is right the link is right below this video cancer ascendant sun or moon this total lunar eclipse is going to happen in your 11th house this is where you'll have culminations and endings the 11th house is where you should expect the unexpected and perhaps something being eclipsed out of your life the 11th house fortunately is a happy house it is the house of our hopes dreams and wishes the 11th house rewards the work that we do in the 10th house so this could actually be very positive for you cancer simply because cancer trines the sign of scorpio where the south node is and cancer trines Taurus where the north node is these are positive and harmonious aspects that are going to make the energy flow easily however cancer that does not mean that you won't have any letting go to do all of us are going to have to let go of something in the Scorpio house so that, bring, so that Venus can bring us something that is positive and fated into our lives but you have to absolutely let go of something in that area Cancer always feels all lunations personally and much more intensely eclipses because Cancer is ruled by the moon, the luminary, who is always part of any lunation. So you are going to feel this very intensely, even if it's good things that happen, simply because the moon is conjunct to Uranus, you're going to have some level of stress and anxiety and perhaps excitement if it's really positive things that happen. So if you've had some type of negative interactions with your friends, the groups that you belong to, social media platforms, they could that, that, that association could come to a dramatic ending and so a, a bad friendship could be eclipsed out of your life a group that has become toxic could also be eclipsed out of your life you could do this voluntarily or perhaps in some cases you could get kicked out you could get kicked out of those groups but you'll be grateful to be out of those relationships or groups since this is a full moon there could be some type of wish fulfillment something that you've been working on for a very very long time could come to fruition because this is the house of rewards this is where we get the accolades this this is where we get the promotions this is where we get the financial windfall this is also a house where we can meet a benefactor so perhaps you're concluding something 
with a benefactor, something that has a really positive result. Cancer, if you'd like to get further guidance on how this lunar eclipse is going to affect you according to your own natal birth chart, I suggest that you take advantage of the special eclipse reading. The link is right below this video. Leo Ascendant Sun or Moon. This lunation is happening in your 10th house. This is where you're going to have culminations and perhaps some endings. The 10th house is also where something is going to be absolutely, totally eclipsed out of your life. This is the house where you have something come to an unexpected and radical ending. Leo, you are a fixed sign, so you are definitely going to be affected by this by this lunar eclipse in an intense way simply because you are a f simply because you square this lunation the only blessing here is that leo is the only fixed sign that doesn't have a planet trans that, that that is not having a planetary transit at this lunation so your sign is not part of the fixed t square you are actually the release point so perhaps you have some kind of relief and power. The 10th house is an angle house. It is the highest point in the zodiac. So whatever happens here is seen by everybody. It's not something you can hide. It's seen by the public. It's a very public area. The 10th house opposes the IC. So whatever happens in your air in so whatever happens in your public area is going to affect your intimate area, your IC. It's also going to affect your relationships and of course it's going to affect you. The 10th house rules over our authority figures, it rules over our bosses, the government, it rules over our status in society what we do for work. Leo, if you haven't listened to the introduction of this video, I highly suggest that you go back and listen to the whole introduction. There's information in the introduction that is going to help you evaluate how this total, how this eclipse is going to affect you according to your own placement. So if you've been at a job for a very long time and you, and you keep getting passed over for promotion, this is the time that you may decide to quit this job and you may decide you may unexpectedly decide to quit this job just walk out of your job quite unexpectedly for others it could be that you get eclipsed in that you in that you lose in, in that you lose your employment at this time and since the 10th house also rules over your status it could be that some of you some of you have a change in status in that you become married, you become a mother, you become divorced, or you become widowed. All those are changes in how people see you. So all those, so these are things that could, these are things that could really happen. These are things that could really happen. And just keep in mind that you have to release something on the IC in your fourth house in order for you to get something that will move you towards your fated karmic future. Leo, there are way too many aspects happening at this lunation this makes predicting what could happen to a large number of leos almost impossible so the best way for you to really see how this energy is going to affect you according to your own natal birth chart is by getting a reading take advantage of the special that i have on this on this on the eclipse reading the link is right below this video your ruling planet the luminary the sun is always part of any lunation so you tend to feel all full moons and new moons personally and you're going to really feel this much more intensely because this is a total lunar eclipse the sun is very involved in this lunation the sun is on the south node you are definitely going to let go of a certain aspect of your identity at this lunation the sun also rules over your identity so you've got a double theme of you know status going on in this you've got a double theme of status going on at the time of this solar at the time of this lunar eclipse virgo ascendant sun or moon this lunar eclipse is happening in your ninth house this is where you'll have absolute culmination this is where you have culminations and endings the ninth house is where you should expect the unexpected and something radical something will be eclipsed out of your ninth house area Virgo is an earth sign so therefore that means Virgo is trining the moon in Taurus and uh, and sextiling the sun in the sign of Scorpio where the south node is these are positive aspects you have the power to choose what what should be eliminated on the south node this energy is asking us to eliminate something in the Scorpio area so that Venus who's currently transiting 
the south node can bring you something that is fated, something that will move you towards your fated karmic future. So essentially this means that this eclipse is not going to be as challenging for you as an earth sign. The ninth house rules over the justice system. It rules over foreign lands, foreign people, foreign languages. It also rules over our higher, it also, it also rules over universities, our gurus, priests, professors. The ninth house also rules over our higher belief system. So you could have an ending in any of those things that I've mentioned. So if you've been living in a foreign country for many years, this is the time that you will be eclipsed out of that foreign land and you'll go back to your own country. If you've been attending university for a few years, this is the time that you this is the time that you will graduate from university. For others who have been waiting for citizenship papers or a green card, this is the time that you may have a conclusion and receive your citizenship or your paper or your citizenship or your green card. And for others that have had a an ongoing lawsuit, I mean a lawsuit that has been going on for several years, this is the time that it will come to a dramatic conclusion. Others who've been whole others who've been practicing a belief system, a belief system that was passed on to them by their family, this is the time you're going to start questioning whether this belief system is something that you really want to stick to and perhaps if we've been wanting to end this belief system this is the time that you will radically just eliminate this belief system out of your life some of you could become some of you could change and some of you could change religions if you're christian you could become muslim or hindu or vice versa or you could become an atheist this is time for you to absolutely bring something to an a to this is a time for you to bring something to a total end your ruling planet Mercury is a part of this total lunar eclipse. He's transiting conjunct the sun in the sign of Scorpio on the south node. The, so perhaps there's some type of information, some type of difficult information that you're going to get at this time because Mercury is square transiting Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. So either you'll be receiving some negative information or you'll be delivering some type of negative information, but there is some type of major letting go or perhaps some type of revelation about something that was hidden below the surface. Virgo, the only way for you to find out how this lunation is going to affect you according to your natal birth chart is by getting a reading. I suggest that you book a reading with me. The link to the special reading for the lunar eclipse is right below this video. Libra Ascendant Sun or Moon. This lunar eclipse is happening in your eighth house. This is where you're going to have culminations and endings. This is also the house where you're going to have something. This is also the house where you should expect the unexpected and some type of radical ending. This is the house where something is going to be totally eclipsed. The eighth house is already a difficult house. The eighth house rules over our secrets, secrets that we hide from others and sometimes secrets that we even and sometimes secrets that we hide even from ourselves the eighth house rules over other people's money it rules over sex death taxes and transformation the eighth house is the house where we bond with another person this is the house of deep intimacy it's the house of shared resources so you will have some type of radical ending in any of those situate in any of those areas libra if you haven't listened to the introduction of this video i suggest that you go and listen to the whole introduction because this really pertains to you you are ruled by venus and venus is the ruler of this lunation and for you libra there is a double eighth house theme going on at this lunation because it's something in the eighth house that is being eclipsed and the eighth house in this chart is also very prominent because this is where the sun is and this is where your ruling planet venus repeat is transiting and she's in detriment perhaps you're not going to be feeling very positive at this lunation because your planet after all you're, you're because your ruling planet after all is in detriment in the sign of scorpio she is in the she's on the south node and she's also squaring and she's also squaring Saturn. There's a negative aspect that can bring breakups in relationships, business agreements, or marriage. So this could be a challenging eclipse for you, Libra. So Libra, if you've had aging parents or aging relatives, this is the time that they will transition to the other side. 
and as a result of their transformation you are going to re you're going to receive some type of inheritance this is a very likely situation this is the eighth house these are the things that happen in the eighth house for some of you if you've been if, uh, and for others, on a positive note, if you've had a mortgage or a car loan for a very long time, this is the time that you could pay off this loan or mortgage. So Libra, the only way to find out how this lunation is going to affect you personally is by getting a reading. I'm still running this special for this eclipse reading. The link to the reading is right below this video. So Libra, this lunar eclipse will be challenging because Venus, the planet that rules you, is in detriment in the sign of Scorpio and is being squared by Saturn. That alone is an aspect that could make that, that alone is an aspect that could make this very very challenging for you scorpio ascendant sun or moon this solar eclipse is happening in your seventh house this is where you're going to have this is where you're going to have culminations and ending this is where you should expect the unexpected and perhaps some really radical changes this is the house where something will be absolutely this is the house where something will be totally eclipsed out of your life the seventh house is an angle house it is the house of the other it, this is the descendant when an angle house is activated all the other angles in your chart are also going to be activated so this could bring changes in any area of your life however the seventh house being the descendant and the house of others it could be major changes that your partner is experiencing at the type at the time of this lunation and because of the changes that they're going through those changes are ultimately going to affect you personally uranus has been transiting there for a while so perhaps your partner has been a bit has been acting a bit radical or you've been starting you've been abruptly starting relationships and having them end just as just as quickly as they started this so, so for some this could be a reality with uranus being highly activated at this lunation a relationship could come to a dramatic ending and remember venus does rule your descendant venus is transiting the south node asking you to release a certain aspect of yourself perhaps a behavior that aspect and after you release that aspect it could most like it will most likely improve your relationship if your relationship still exists after this lunation or it could just change how you relate to one another since uranus is highly unpredictable it could be that you meet someone fall deeply in love and decide to get married or for others it could be that you decide to end a relationship that has been that has not been working out your ruling planets mars and pluto are the rulers of the south node and fortunately they're not directly aspecting this lunation this means that the force the changes are not going to be forced upon you do so perhaps you have the power to decide what should be eliminated, what certain what aspects of yourself should be eliminated at this lunar eclipse. This lunar eclipse is asking us to let go of something in the Scorpio area so that Venus can bring us perhaps a fated and karmic relationship. So we can't escape this. So we can't escape this aspect of this lunar eclipse. Scorpio, if you have not listened to the introduction of this video, I highly suggest that you listen to the whole I highly suggest that you listen to the whole introduction. You are a fixed you are a fixed sign. You are the ruler of the south node and your planet is currently transiting retrograde in the sign of in the, it's currently transiting retrograde in the sign of Gemini and squaring Neptune. So this means that you are one of the people who could be deceived or deceiving others or perhaps not seeing things clearly at the time of this lunar eclipse. And unfortunately, Venus, the descendant ruler, the ruler of this lunation on the south node, transiting your sign even though venus is there making you feel really beautiful when venus transits the ascendant we tend to be very attractive to others is still squaring saturn that is a negative aspect so it's very likely that a lot of scorpio ascendants end a relationship at this lunation or perhaps have some type of financial losses if you really want to know how this lunar eclipse is going to affect you according to your natal horoscope, I suggest that you book a reading. Take advantage of the special that I'm running. It's going to be over by the 15th of November, so book now. Sagittarius Ascendant Sun Hormone. 
this lunar eclipse is happening in your sixth house this is the area where you're going to have culminations and endings the sixth house is where you should expect the unexpected and for something to be totally eclipsed out of your life the sixth house rules over our daily routine it rules over our health exercise regimen the job that you do and your co-workers the sixth house also rules over our our known enemies so this is why i always say your co-worker is not your friend your co-worker is an acquaintance they're just a co-worker because if there's a running for a promotion or some type of competition you will be competing against your co-worker therefore making them your known enemy so be careful with the relationships in your place of work so if you've had some type of ongoing rivalry or some type of enemy situation with your co-worker this is the time that it could come to a dramatic end and for others if you've been unhappy with your job and you feel this is not the and you feel that this is not where you and you don't feel like you belong there anymore you could decide to quit your job in a quite dramatic fashion and on the other hand if your performance has not been up to par this is the time that you could be unexpectedly fired from your job not that anyone expects to be fired well some people do expect it since the sixth house rules over our daily routine and our habits this is an excellent time for you to decide to end something that has been detrimental to your health perhaps an eating habit or a lack of exercise or perhaps you have a smoking habit or you drink too much or you do drugs this is an excellent time for you to go cold turkey and just drop these habits get some type of counseling go to rehab and if you've been dealing with a chronic illness of some type this is the time that this illness could be eliminated you could possibly get some healing unexpectedly at the time of this lunation the best way to use this energy is to consciously make changes is to consciously let go of something in the scorpio house so that venus can bring you something new something that is fated and karmic even if you don't want to let go Go. simply because even if you don't want to let go this is a total lunar eclipse it's going to be eclipsed out of your life this whatever whatever ends is something that is not whatever ends at this time is something that is no longer useful in your future so just simply let it be taken out so that, so that you can move towards your fated future Sagittarius, if you haven't listened to the beginning of this video, I suggest you go and listen to the whole introduction because there's information that you can use to find out how this is going to affect you according to your own natal birth chart. And if you still need further guidance, I suggest that you take advantage of the eclipse reading special while I'm still running it. Your ruling planet Jupiter is not directly aspecting this lunation. There is a wide trine and sextile to the luminaries, but it's very wide. Jupiter is transiting at an anoretic degree, 29 degrees of Pisces, and is square the galactic center. That is a very powerful and karmic aspect so perhaps something else is also coming to culmination or ending in the area where in the Pisces area of your chart perhaps Sagittarius is going to be pushed into taking some type of action in your fourth house area because this is where Jupiter is currently transiting because this is where Jupiter is currently transiting retrograde Sagittarius, the best way to find out how this lunation is going to aspect is going to aspect you according to your own natal birth chart is by getting a reading. Book a reading with me. I'm still running the eclipse special. The link is right below this video. In Capricorn Ascendant Sun or Moon, this lunation is happening in your fifth house. This is where you'll have culminations and endings. This is also the house where you should expect the unexpected and perhaps something really radical coming to a conclusion. This is the house where something is going to be absolutely and totally eclipsed. However, this lunar eclipse is somewhat going this lunar eclipse is going to be mostly positive for you capricorn simply because you trine the sign of taurus where the moon is and you sextile the sign of scorpio where the, where the sun is this means that the energy is going to flow harmoniously between these houses and you may have to make some effort to take advantage of whatever opportunities are presented to you at this time the fifth house is a happy house. It's generally a very lucky house. So we like to see um, a solar, we like to see lunations in this house. 
if you're pregnant and you're close to giving birth, this total lunar eclipse could put you, could have you unexpectedly go into labor. So if you're around that time, just be very prepared. On the flip side, if you've been having challenges getting pregnant, this lunar eclipse could suddenly bring you a positive pregnancy test. And it would be happy news if that's what you want. And it could possibly be negative if that's not what you want. If that's not what you want. So if you don't want children in the near future, I suggest that you use protection because the energy of this eclipse is just not happening on that particular day. It's happening, it's going to be in effect for at least the next six months. That's a general caution period for you Capricorns. So keep in mind that this eclipse is asking us to let go of something in the Taurus, to let go of something in the Scorpio area of our chart so that we may welcome in something that Venus is trying to bring is trying to bring in our life and whatever venus is bringing is something that's going to be fated and karmic she is the ruler of the transiting north node after all capricorn if you haven't if capricorn if you haven't listened to the introduction of this video i suggest that you go back and listen to the whole introduction there's information that you can use to evaluate how it's going to affect you according to your own according to your own natal birth chart and if you need further guidance, I suggest that you book a reading with me. I'm still running that. So I'm still running the Eclipse special. The link is right below this video. So Capricorn, if you've had an ongoing situation that you've been holding on to and you know it has to come to an end, something to do with your children or a romantic partner, this is the time that this situation is going to be ended or there will be some type of culmination. You are going to have to let go of some element of that situation. Some people could have an absolute ending of a romantic relationship simply because Venus is squaring your sign. Saturn square Venus is usually and usually brings an ending usually will usually brings an ending to a romantic relationship and enter a romantic relationship since romance also falls under this house if you have a gambling problem this is not the time for you to go out there and bet the farm it is a lucky house but unfortunately your ruler Saturn is aspecting this house precisely Venus in a negative aspect this indicates financial losses this is not the time for you to make life-changing financial life-changing financial decisions. I'd like to say that this is a positive lunation for you, but I have to draw caution again back to the fact that you, you are squaring the ruler of this lunation, Venus, who's transiting on the south node, wanting you to lose something, let go of something. So be very careful with whatever decisions you make at the time of this lunation. Aquarius Ascendant Sun or Moon. This lunation is happening in your fourth house. This is where you're going to have endings and culminations. The fourth house is where you should also expect the unexpected and expect something to be totally eclipsed out of your life. The fourth house is an angle house. It is the most vulnerable and sensitive point in the zodiac. It rules over our family, our homeland, it rules also over our ancestry. This house also rules over our deep hidden emotions. And these emotions could be resentments towards our heritage, towards your mother or your family. The fourth house is an angle house. It is the icy. When an angle house is activated, it activates all the other angles in your chart. So this means the opposing angle, the MC, the 10th house, is also activated. Whatever decisions or endings that come in your fourth house, they're going to affect your standing in society. Of course, they're going to affect the ascendant that is you and the opposing angle, the descendant, that is the relationships you have with other people. So being that you're a fixed sign Aquarius, being that Aquarius is a fixed sign, you are going to be very, very impacted by this lunation and it could absolutely change your life. Aquarius, if you have not listened to the beginning of this video, I suggest you go back and listen to the whole introduction. And after you've listened to the introduction, you feel like you need further guidance, I suggest you book a reading with me. The link to the special for the eclipses is right below this video. I'm going to end this special reading by the 15th, so book now. Some of you could have a major ending in their fourth house, in their home area, in their living situation, and this could happen abruptly and 
this could happen abruptly and suddenly. Since the fourth house is the parental axis, if your parents or your, or your grandparents have been ill or they're ripe with old age, this is the time that they could transition out of this existence. So it's very likely that there is some type of death that happens as a result of this total lunar eclipse because the fourth house is also the other house where we end things. For others, it could simply be an ending with a living loca with a location where you live or with the people that you live with. Other people, some people could be eclipsed out of your home. An ongoing situation that has been somewhat negative could also be eclipsed out. Whichever way you look at it, there will be some type of change in your home area or with your emotions and if you've been dealing with negative emotions perhaps depression this is an this is an excellent time for you to go and get help so that you can eclipse this condition this eclipse is asking us to let go of something in the scorpio area of our chart so let go of a status that you have held on to for a very long time. It could be that you let go of being a single person, get married. You let go of being married and get divorced. Some type of release is needed on the south node in order for, you, for Venus to bring you something that is fated in the fourth house. So let me bring astrology to life and give you an example of what happened with my partner. He is an Aquarius rising. He moved into his home, therefore he let go of a status of being a single, being, being a single, single man, being a bachelor, to having a living mate. So this is something that could literally happen. His situation has an addition to the story, being that he's also a Taurus moon. So essentially he had... It, it, so essentially that's like a double emphasis of a change to the home area and to emotions so this is something that could literally happen for you and this is why it's important to get your own reading we don't know about the other planets that you have in your aquarius house your ruling planet saturn and uranus are part of this lunation especially uranus especially uranus in that he is conjunct he is exactly conjunct the moon and opposing the sun. So just those aspects alone make it very intense for you, Aquarius, and also make it very difficult to predict exactly what could happen without looking at your without looking at your chart. So whichever way you look at it, change is coming. Change is going to change is coming. Something is going to radically change in your life. Something is going to radically change as a result of whatever comes to an end in your fourth house area. Your whole life is going to be absolutely changed and transformed. This is an eclipse that you're going to remember for a very long time to come. Pisces Ascendant Sun Hormone. This eclipse is happening, this eclipse is happening in your third house. The third house is where you have culminations and endings. This is, all the, this is also the house where you should expect the unexpected and for something to be totally eclipsed out of your life. The third house rules over our immediate environment. It rules over our neighbors, our siblings, the gadgets that we use in our daily life, like our phones, our computers. It can also rule over your vehicle because we use our cars to get around our immediate environment. The third house also rules over learned skills, our learning ability. It rules over speech, communication. So expect something radical to come to an end in any of those things that I've mentioned. If you've had an ongoing toxic situation with a sibling, this is the time that it will come to a sibling or a neighbor. This is the time that it will come to an absolute radical unexpected end. And perhaps this ending has to happen in order for you to improve that relationship with your neighbor or your sibling. Because Venus at this because Venus is asking us to let go of something in the Scorpio house area or in the Taurus area because this is where the total eclipse is happening after all so that Venus can bring us something that is fated and karmic something that will take us to our destined future Pisces ascendant is being aspected by this 
lunation in a very positive way in that Pisces trines the sign of Scorpio so there is a positive trine going on there with whatever planets you have in Pisces and Scorpio and the, uh, Pisces sextiles Taurus so that is another harmonious aspect so if you take and if so if you make the initiative to do the letting go and the releasing yourself this might be actually a very positive lunar eclipse for you Pisces if you have not listened to the introduction of this video I suggest that you go back and listen to the whole introduction because there is information that you can use to see how this to see how to evaluate how this lunar eclipse would affect you will affect you according to your own place to your own placements and if you'd like further guidance i suggest that you book a reading with me i'm still running this special until about the 15th of november the link to the reading is right below this video if so if you've been learning a language or perhaps learning a skill this is this is the time that you're going to finish whatever it is that you've been learning and whatever you've learned is something that is going to stay in your life for a very long time to come. Since this also rules the immediate environment, perhaps you've had this ongoing dispute with a neighbor or some friends or some local people in or some local people in your neighborhood. You might decide to abruptly leave this neighborhood. You may decide to move away from this neighborhood. The third house also can rule the home and moving simply because that is your immediate environment. It is where you live. And if you're very unhappy there, it's very likely that you're going to just decide to move and surprise everyone. Your, your ruling planets, Jupiter and Neptune, are aspecting this illumination by a wide sextile and trine. Your ruling planets are also conjunct in this house for the very for the second time in 168 years. So this is a momentous time for you, Pisces. Some of you will decide to change the whole direction of their life because, as I said in the introduction, Jupiter is retrograding in Pisces for about two degrees backwards, therefore aspecting the galactic center by a square aspect. This means that you are going to be pushed into taking some type of action, action that will change your life, action that will change your your standing in society if that's your son, action that will change your emotional your emotions or your home if it's your moon sign, actions that will change your, your your identity if it's your son action that will change you personally if it's your ascendant so this eclipse is a big moment for you pisces so if you'd like further guidance i suggest that you book a reading with me i'm still running the special for 60 dollars for the eclipse readings the link is right below this video that this is the only way you'll find out exactly how this eclipse is going to affect you personally it is a positive eclipse so make sure you make sure you're looking out for opportunities and taking action the third house is the house of action it is a martian house we have to take action in this we have to take action in this house in order to achieve the in order to achieve the results that we want and jupiter is back here for two months making sure that you take this make sure making sure that you take this action so that you may progress